Yo guys, today I'm going to speedrun an extension marathon. There's 5 maps in extension, I will speedrun all of them in chronological order. This means that I'm going to start with point of contact. I load into the map and as soon as these green letters appear, I'm going to start a timer. To beat this map, I have to destroy all the hives by placing a trail next to them. All the hives take 2 minutes to be destroyed and I can't speed it up at all. What I can do is move the drill as fast as possible between the hive locations by using fell instincts and my starting pistol. I use one skill point on both of them to maximize speed right off the bat. While the drill is destroying the hives, I have to set up a bunch of stuff. After I destroy all the hives in the first area, I have to destroy a big barrier hive. This hive will have to be destroyed by pure damage. In this map there is a bunch of propane tanks and I'm going to collect all of them and throw them onto the barrier hive. There is 3 hives in this area, so I basically have 6 minutes to get everything ready to go and destroy the barrier hive as quickly as possible. While I'm setting things up, I also have to make sure the drill doesn't break and at the end of the hive, I have to move the drill to the next hive as fast as possible. There is also these challenges. Completing these challenges will give me skill points, and they are very important. I can use these skill points to upgrade anything in my loadout. To maximize my damage against the upcoming barrier hive, I want to max out my classes. I'm running Weapon Specialist, which will give me 50% more bullet damage, and also Engineer, which will triple the damage of all the propane tanks. Not having these upgrades would be a massive time loss, but to max out my class, I will need to complete every single challenge in this area. So I have to juggle the drill, moving all the propane tanks, and completing all the challenges before the first barrier hive starts. Luckily, I'm the current world record holder of Point of Contact, so I'm quite skilled at doing all this at the same time. As my last challenge, I get turret kills, which is quite easy to do, and I also managed to throw the last propane tank on top of the barrier hive. I also set up this portable turret in this specific spot, which will definitely be useful later. When the last hive in this area ends, I get the drill real quick, and now it's time for the fastest barrier hive kill you have ever seen. So we can do this. Okay, nice. We go out of bounds, we go to the second area, uh, we take the drill with us, uh, we set the drill uh, up about here, uh, spots, by the bulldog, because bulldog is the most damage gun uh, in the map. I'm gonna shoot the shit out of this, basically. Okay, that's what we wanted. That was the first barrier hive. I just destroyed the barrier hive in 10 seconds. In a normal game, it takes about 1.5 minutes to destroy it. So this is a huge time save. And it was definitely worth all the setup. Now it's time for the second area. Luckily in this area, all the hives take 3 minutes. Because I have to set up even more stuff. Again, there are a lot of propane tanks that have to get to the barrier hive. And again, I will go out of bounds to the next area early. I set up all the propane tanks by the end of the second hive. And I start the third hive. Now I have 3 minutes to do some wacky stuff. I place down an IMS system which will keep the drill safe because I'm gonna be gone for a bit. Using a portable turret you can clip out of bounds in some very specific places and this is one of them. Now I have to climb on this rock by doing some parkouring. I jump on this ledge, climb the tentacle, do a strafe jump and I get on top of the rock. Now I can jump down getting to the out of bounds of the turret area. Fortunately, I can't get into the third area because it's surrounded by a big invisible wall. But by falling off the map in this specific location, I get put back in bounds and I can run to the second barrier hive. But unfortunately, I'm still missing the drill. I set up a portable turret in this spot so I can go back to the third area whenever I want. I jump over the barrier hive and get back to the second area. The hive ends and I pick up the drill and place it next to this fence. I use my portable turret to clip through the fence and then I set up the drill somewhere in this area. I also prepare another portable turret for some extra damage and now it's time for another beautiful very high kill. Okay, helicopter's coming in. Right on that, yes, thanks, beautiful. So now I can leave early, which is a strat in this uh, hive, because it's a quite a long walk, but because I can leave early, I can be ready at the next hive whenever it's ready, which is really nice. 
So that was perfect timing as well. That barrier hive was super smooth and I timed my early leaf perfectly. But now it's time for the lost area. There is one more major time save left, which will be the out of bounds escape. I upgrade my IMS to max, because that way it will have more shots and it can defend the drill for longer. During the third hive in the area, I place down an IMS and I'm gonna go back to the second area. I go to this out of bounds spot again and set up a portable turret, which I will be using later. Now it's time for the final hive, which has a duration of 5 minutes, so I have a lot of time to set up a lot of stuff. Again, I place down IMS and I leave the third area. I run towards the turret I set up earlier and I hop out of bounds. Again, I need to climb up this whole mountain and I get to the out of bounds of the third area. I set up a portable turret in this specific spot, which I will be using to clip out of bounds during the escape. I can't jump off the map again to get inbounds in the third area, because I need one self ref for the escape. So I have to get all the way back to the first area and run all the way around. But luckily my IMS is still keeping the drill safe. The hive ends and now it's time for the escape. Activate the nuke. Go fells. Run towards the turret. Boom. There we go. Let's do this strafe jump. I'm gonna do it. I, I didn't do it as fast as I could because I was scared it would fall. Okay, but that was the out of bounds escape. Let's go, we did it. I could have done the a crazy jump over that line, but there was no floor at all. It's just one line of floor. So you gotta be real careful with it. Uh, so I took it a bit slow, so I maybe lost a second there, but if I can finish the run, that's worth it in my opinion. But we got another uh, chopper. I got a golden chase at the very end. This is a really fast time, guys. I'm gonna check what the world record is on point right now, because this was really fast. 36. Oh, wait. No. I pressed zero, which, which resets my timer. Uh, that's so stupid. That was a beautiful point of contact run to start off this marathon. It was only 5 seconds slower than world record, which is absolutely insane. Unfortunately, I did reset my timer. To fix this, I added the point of contact time right here. This way I can add it up later to see how the marathon is going. The next map on the list is Nightfall, which has a really cool speedrun. Only the in-game time is counted by the way for the speedrun marathon, because loading times can vary drastically between consoles. So the timer is resumed again, but the queen lets appear. I immediately upgrade Ferals for speed and I try to do the fence clip. Normally you have to wait for the fence to open, but by jumping in this corner you can sometimes clip to the fence. I don't exactly know how it works and unfortunately I don't get it this game, so I just have to get the drill like normal and place it at the first hive. If you want to see the fence clip in action, you can watch my Nightfall speedrun video after this one. The link will be in the description. In the first area of this map, there will be 4 hives that I need to destroy before the first boss fight. While I destroy these hives, I buy an MTS, which is the highest DPS gun in this area. I also find an extend max and an arc attachment, making the gun even better. The arc attachment is a 33% damage buff and a range buff, so it's really good. I invest all my skill points into my claws and feral instincts for extra movement speed. And now I get to the end of the final hive. Now it's time for the first boss fight. For this breeder fight, I'm gonna stand right here. I'm gonna throw a flare. I'm gonna put my skill point into ferals. Control ferals. I'm gonna pick up the drill. Put it right here. It even gets a bit laggy when the breeder spawns in, as you can see. Okay, now I gotta kill the breeder, but not too fast because then the game stops close. So I'm gonna kill it now. Oh, the game is so laggy. Okay, that was not too fast because of the arc attachments, like I said. The game was also hella laggy, uh, which I was not expecting. That was a pretty good boss fight, and I only lost a few seconds to the game lagging a bit. The drill teleporting because I placed it too fast is actually really beneficial on this map. Because when the drill ends, I can pick it up and place it on this hive, which is really close by. The last hive in this area is unfortunately located on top of this building. Normally you can't climb with the drill, but by placing it and immediately climbing, you can cancel the placement and take the drill up the wall with you. This way I don't have to lose time by walking all the way around. The last hive in this area ends, but now there is no boss fight. It does show up for a bit, but I can't fight him unfortunately, so I just run through his legs and go to the next area. Before I place the drill in the next area, I have to wait for the breeder to disappear. 
Otherwise, the drill will vanish and the game will soft lock. So I have to be really careful with that, but it's no problem in this run. In this area, I'm gonna get a few more skill points to finish out all the upgrades. You might have noticed that I'm running mortar strikes instead of an IMS. The mortar strikes max upgraded together with the engineer max upgraded deal a ridiculous amount of damage. My plan is to use them to one cycle to breed the fight. Normally the fight consists of two phases, but if I manage to kill him within 10 seconds, you can skip it completely. This would save a whole minute in the speedrun. I also grab the Venom Axe which becomes available after destroying the hive that is blocking it. This is the wonder weapon of the map and it's also going to help me a lot with the one cycle. I destroyed the last hive in the area and now it's time for the final boss fight. So we're going to stand on this patch of grass, very important. I'm going to look in that specific spot with my Venom. Okay, I'm very nervous right now. I haven't done this in a long time. I was a bit slow with the mortar strikes and I don't think I'm gonna do it. I also died somehow. Oh fuck, I threw a nade instead of uh, doing what I needed to do. That was so bad. Oh no, fuck, I messed up the one cycle. Unfortunately, I did mess up the one cycle. So now the breed is invulnerable and I have to wait for him to get down again. This loses me a minute, but the rest of the map was really good, so I still save time overall. If you do want to see the one cycle in action, check out my Nightfall run in the description. Okay, let's finish off this breeder real quick. So this should have happened. I should have spent mortals, and he would have been in spot, and he would just die immediately. Damn, that was unfortunate though. But that's two maps completed, three more to go. Next up on the list is Mayday which is the slowest map out of all of them. But at least there are some cool skips I can do. I start off again by upgrading ferals, and as soon as the boat arrives, I can pick up the drill and get to the first hive. On this map, I switch to running Medic and the Vulture drone. Medic makes me immune to poison gas, which is really helpful, and the Vulture is gonna help me kill a bunch of stuff later in the run. After completing the first two hives in the area, I arrive at the first door. You have to use the drill to open this door before you can progress. But with the portable turret, I can clip to the door and take the drill with me, so I don't have to wait for the door to open up. Unfortunately on this door, I failed to grab the drill, so I have to wait until the door opens up, so I can progress like normal. You only have 5 frames while you're inside the door to pick up the drill, because when you're on the other side, you can't pick up the drill anymore. This is a pretty hard trick to pull off, and unfortunately I failed it this time. Now I have to destroy this one tentacle of the Kraken boss fight, and that gets me to the next door. I can do the same trick with the portable turret on this one, and I actually managed to pull it off, so I don't have to wait at all for the door to open, saving a lot of time. This next area is not at eventful until I arrive at the final door. I build a Tessa trap to keep the drill safe, and I again try to clip to the door, but unfortunately I fail. This means I have to do this part like normal, losing a bit of time. I press the button, grab the drill, and hop inside the lift. By doing a good jump, I can get out of the lift early, and I can save a bit of time but I completely mess up. I fall all the way down and now I have to wait for the game to put me back on the upper deck. This loses a lot of time, but it was completely my fault. Eventually I get teleported up and I can continue to run. The upper deck can get quite hectic, but with my chainsaw everything dies pretty fast. I also have medic which heals me really quickly whenever I take damage. At the end of the final hive in the area, I have to kill everything as fast as I can, because only when everything is dead will I be able to start the next phase. I'm gonna use a flare, call in my max upgraded vulture, and use my infinite ammo ability, and I'm gonna spawn trap everything. Okay, so I'm gonna throw my flare down, also call in the vulture. Vulture will help me kill everything. I'm gonna kill things like phantoms as soon as possible, because they have a lot of HP. So, as soon as things spawn, I'm gonna need to shred them now. If you hear the voice line, you know you're good. And then the button can be pressed uh, very soon. As soon as this voice ends. There we go. Now I can start the gas phase, which is really easy. I just care about protecting this one valve, and I don't care about any of the others. This makes it super easy to be completed, and when it ends, I run as quickly as I can to the Kraken boss fight. He spawns in, and it looks very cool. 
because speedrunning is an absolute nightmare. He has 7 health caps and I can't speed up the fight at all. So it's basically a 10 minute interactable cutscene that I'm just gonna skip through. In the end he goes down and I can finish the map. That was definitely not my best melee run, but because I had such a good point of contact run, I still have a chance to get world record. The next map on the list is Awakening, which has become quite an interesting speedrun in the last years. I spawn in, immediately upgrade ferals and throw them down. I pick up the drill and move it to the first obelisk. In this map there are no hives, but instead there are obelisks. They are basically the same thing as hives, the only difference is that now multiple aliens can attack the drill at the same time. This means that protecting the drill is a bit more important now. Because of that, I'm back to winning the IMS, like I did in Point of Contact. I'm also using Cryptid Slayer ammo, which is the combination of all ammo types in the game. It's really overpowered, but unfortunately Cryptid Slayer ammo cancels out the 50% damage boost of Vapa Specialist. Because of this, I didn't use it on the other maps, because the Barry Hive, Breeder and Kraken are not affected by the extra effects of Cryptid Slayer ammo, so I wanted pure damage. But on this map there are no bosses, so I can use Crypto Slay ammo because all the effects together are really strong. Probably stronger than the 50% damage boost of Emma Specialist. While the obelisk is being scanned, I check out all the pocket areas. In these areas there are useful things that can help you beat the map. When you enter a pocket area, a mammoth also spawns, but with the chainsaw that's not much of a problem. I find an arc attachment which is a nice damage boost. And I find the Venom Nade schematic. With it I can search around the map and I can craft the Venom Nades. I craft two sets of Venom Nades because they are going to be really useful later. Now I have to use the Vanguard drone and I need to destroy all the obelisks in this area before I can continue to the next area. It's really important that the Vanguard doesn't get destroyed because that would lose a lot of time. With the Vanguard I destroy all of the obelisks in this area except for the last one. I hop out of the drone and I start chugging grenades at the last obelisk. It only takes 8 Venom Nades to destroy the obelisk and this is way faster than the Vanguard could ever destroy it. I'm also using the Magnum because it has the fastest handling speed, making the throws even faster. And now I can progress to the second area. At the end of this area there is another Vanguard section, so again I'm gonna craft some extra Venom Nades. I check all the pocket areas, but unfortunately there is no Venom Nade schematic in this area. So this is exactly why I brought the IMS. I place down the IMS to protect the drill and I just pray it stays safe until I'm back getting the Venom Nade schematic. I search and craft my first set of Venom Nades and now I need to repeat the whole process to get another stack of them. But now I'm ready for the second Vanguard section. Fortunately I didn't find a flare, so going through the tunnel with the Vanguard is going to be really risky. As you can see there's already a scout in the tunnel. And I will definitely get hit here. I just hope I don't die. Oh, I actually managed to protect myself, I only got hit once by that other scout, so that was kind of good. Then I get off, I can activate Medic Circle and I can start throwing this. It deals so much self damage, it's crazy. So I have to use Medic Circle to uh, keep myself safe. That Vanguard section was pretty much perfect and I get to the final area. Here there is 3 more obelisks before I can get to the terminal fence phase and the escape. I do find a rapid fire which is going to increase my damage output by a lot. I finish the area without a problem. And now I can start the terminal phase. I just have to protect these 4 terminals for 4 minutes, which is not too hard with the slowdown. But at the end of the terminal phase, I'm not gonna make any more kills. I need to keep all the aliens alive, because I will need their souls later. When the terminal phase ends, I pick up the Medusa, and now I just have to escape the map. It will kill everything, but since I just used it and didn't fill it up yet, it uh, will not kill everything. Then I can take it, all these aliens with me to the next door. I have to use my medic circle to stay alive. So now I can start killing like crazy. Like, I'm gonna make so much kills here. As you can see, the meter is already half full, and I just started. Enter is fine. Activate the cortex. Pick up the cortex, go to the next one. Also, notice I'm not reloading at all. I just throw Crypto Slayer ammo and this instantly reloads my mag, which is way faster than a normal reload. Okay, for this one is going to be another Rhino. Right 
it's messing up with the prone fouls there, but uh, it was kind of okay. Okay, so with this the last one is the coolest trick. I'm gonna go through this tunnel, and going through this tunnel spawns bombers. So I need to be really quickly and place the cortex before the bombers hit me. But then I can kill the bombers to count towards the charge. So four bombers spawn just now because of that, and I'm just gonna kill them really quickly, all of them. There we go. So that already uh, filled the bar half full. I'm just gonna make a few more kills. More, one more. There we go. Oh, what the hell, the rhino killed me. I should have used medic circle and I would have been fine. That's uh, super unfortunate though. <laughs> I should have used medic circle, I don't know why I didn't do that. But that's uh, fine. A really unfortunate death at the end, but that awakening run was really good. Except for some small things, it was pretty much perfect. Because this was a pretty clean run, I have a real shot at world record. If I do some math and add a point of contact time to the total time, we get 2 hours, 46 minutes and 19 seconds. This means that I have 32 minutes to beat the last map on the list, Exodus. If I manage to do it, I can still grab world record. My best time on this map individually is about 30 minutes, so with a good run and a bit of luck, it should be possible to grab the marathon record. It all comes down to this. I spawn in and immediately upgrade my pistol for the speed boost. I sprint towards the first door and open it. As you can see, Exodus is a bit different than the other maps. Instead of moving the drill between hives, this map has doors and generators. You have to open the doors to get access to the three different areas, and each area has two generators that need to be turned on. I can choose in what order I do these areas and generators, and there is no drill that I need to carry around. I just have to be ready next to a door or generator before the previous one ends to avoid any time loss. Because of this, I'm also not using Feral Instincts, since there is no drill that needs to be moved really fast. Instead, I'm using armor, which is definitely going to save me at some point. This is also the first map where I use a sentry gun, which is going to be very useful for the final fight. I start off this map opening three doors, giving me access to the whole map. While doing this, I make sure to complete every challenge and I also start crafting a lot of stuff to prepare myself for the final fight. I craft one set of NX1 disruptor nades, which are necessary for removing the shields of the ancestors, which are the bosses of this map. Then I craft two sets of Venom Nade and I set them up in these specific places because here there will be ancestors in the final fight. While doing the generators in the gas station I also craft the NX1 Disruptor Wonder Weapon which is a beast of a gun. It also really helps with dealing with the ancestors because it can remove their shields. During the second generator of the gas station the first ancestor spawns but I kill it really quickly so I can get another skill point. Next up are the two generators in the parking area. While doing these, I also got a set of sticky flares. I also grab a schematic for the Tessa trap, so I can start searching paths for it already, but I'm gonna save it for the final fight. During the second generator in the parking garage area, there will be another ancestor, but with the runner weapon and the chainsaw, I can kill it and leave the generator to go to the next area. Now I have to activate two generators in the office area. This area is the hardest out of all of them, but that's exactly why I save it for last. At the end of the last generator, I'm not gonna make any more kills, because I need to save the souls of all the aliens for later. I kind of mess up and the generator almost dies, so I have to hurry to save it really quickly. Because of this, I'm not ready in the starting area to start the final fight, and this loses me a bit of time. But now I arrive in spawn, where I have to wait a bit before I can start the final fight, but I just keep running around, otherwise the enemies will kill me really quickly. When it's almost time for the final fight, I throw a flare and go sit next to the activation button, in this final fight, I have to make kills to fill the Medusa. These aliens that are looking at the flare are going to give it a nice boost right at the start. But most of the Medusa will be filled by the ancestors that will spawn one by one from either left, middle or right gate. Each ancestor goes paired with a few types of enemy spawns. I'm praying that I get front gate and left gate ancestors, because rhinos, phantoms and scorpions fill the Medusa really fast. If I get a right gate ancestor, gargoyles and bombers will spawn, which barely fill the Medusa at all. I think if I get a right gate ancestor, I will lose too much time and I will not get world record anymore, so I'm really hoping for a 1 in 6 miracle. This whole 3 hour run comes down to this final battle.
So yeah, you can always see that uh, a bit of the bar is already filled by that. Also, we get Fun Gate, which is the best uh, scenario. I mean, Fun Gate is really good. Getting Fungate first is actually perfect. I also damaged the Ancestor, but I kept him alive for now, because he will be spawning Hunters that I can kill, which will count towards the Medusa bar. I also turn on pretty much every trap in the area, and I set up a Sentry and a Tessa trap to protect the Medusa. Now it's time to spawn trap a bunch of Rhinos. At the end of the front gate, the game really wants to spawn two Rhinos on the map, but if you kill them fast enough, they just keep spawning. That's how you fill and use the device. Okay, that was the last one though. Um, you're gonna kill this ancestor too fast. Because you have a minimum to spare time. Oh, we got perfect gates. That's so beautiful for the end of this marathon. I'm so lucky, guys. It's insane. It's unbelievable, lucky. I just could kill a few more aliens, so everything is fine. A few more things. Mm. Okay, we did it, we did it, we did it. Didn't see any phantoms, but that's okay. Oh, this is definitely world record, guys. 100%. Come on, end screen, come on, end screen. Yes, there we go. So, uh, we got to add 36 minutes to this time, but then we get a, a 3 hours 16 minute run, uh, which is world record by 2 minutes, so let's go. 2 minutes in a 3 hour and 18 minute run. We managed to save 2 minutes, guys. Hell oh, yeah. Point of contact was most of the time safe, to be honest. My time was pretty accurate, because this run was indeed world record by a bit more than 2 minutes. It is a long run, but I'm super happy with the record. If you want to see the stream of the whole thing, you can find the link in the description. Speedruns of every map individually are also linked in the description if you want to learn more about a specific run. If you made it this far, consider subscribing. I'm a very small YouTube channel and I really appreciate every sub. I will definitely do more speedruns and challenge runs in the future. But this is all I have for today, but I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.